would like to meditate from the Exodus chapter 17. Rivers for the thirsty. Not just a cup of water for the thirsty. God is ready to open up rivers. Think about it. When he opens up, it's a rivers. When you ask for water, I can maximum give you a cup of water or a jug of water. Okay, do you understand? The hand of the Lord is greater than human abilities, my dear brothers and sisters. And also, in Exodus chapter 17, I'll be reading a few more verses than what is mentioned here. But I'll start with this. In the sixth verse, it says, Behold, God is saying to Moses, I will stand before you, Moses, there on the rock at Horeb. And you shall strike the rock, and water will come out of it, that the people may drink. Hallelujah. And Moses did so in the sight of the elders of Israel. My dear brothers and sisters, I have always mentioned to you that we always have to go to the context of the text that we are meditating. What context? Such type of wonderful blessings and miracles happen. Okay. So in the first verse, if you have the Bible, you can open it to Exodus 17. Then all the congregation of the sons of Israel journeyed by stages from the wilderness of sin. Okay. In the des desert place of sin. Okay. So according to the command of the Lord and camped at Rephidim. So the place now what where, where things are happening is called Rephidim. And there was no water for the people to drink. Think about it. Moses is the leader. Aaron is the priest. But no water. Such great leaders. Such great anointing. But no water for the people. Scarcity. So just because you have a wonderful leader, it doesn't mean that you will not go through problems. You will encounter dangers on the way. You will encounter enemies on the way. You will also see that nature is standing against you. Okay? Water was a scarcity there. Therefore, the people, God's own people, for whom God was ready to even destroy the whole army of Egypt and the Pharaoh, these people whom we admire, even now we have a liking towards Jewish people, right? We keep Jewish people at a very high regard. Okay, you know what these people did? Therefore the people quarreled with Moses. <laughs> they started fighting, arguments, shouting. Moses and said, give us water that we may drink. We are not asking for gold and silver. We are asking for just the basic necessity. Our children are, are thirsty. Our women are thirsty. They can't cook. They can't drink water. Give us water that we may drink. And you know what was Moses' response? Why do you quarrel with me? Why do you test the Lord? Why do you test the Lord? But the people thirsted there for water. And they grumbled against Moses and said, Why now have you brought us up from Egypt? So they went to the extent on questioning why we actually started this journey. You forgot that you were a slave. 15 to 17 hours you have to work like an animal, getting the beatings, no pay. A slave doesn't get paid, no salary, no superannuation, no bonus, no health care. If you stand against them, you will be killed. Day and night, man and woman, children, no education. No school, nothing. When the Egyptians are learning different languages huh, and carving in the stones, all beautiful things and also these people were building great, great palaces and pyramids for the enemy who was enslaved them. Think about it. All your effort is going to the enemy. So they forgot that. When thirst came in the desert, you forget all the miseries. Because they had chicken biryani, mutton biryani there in Egypt. Even though in the midst of slavery, they had some cattle. They were able to cook proper food and eat. Goshen, in Goshen. Okay? But now, they rebelled against Moses. So Moses started crying. You know, such a mighty man of God with whom... God was literally face to face speaking. Hmm? He's, when these people started questioning their journey, he start, he's broken. Oh, you see, that is why when we, when we see 
how to say that there is no gratitude in the people leaders break down do you understand so moses started crying out to the lord saying what shall i do to those people a little more and they will stone me they will kill me so there is a group within israel who is ready to even kill moses not just fight with them because until moses is alive these people have to travel against the direction of goshen if he is not going to be convinced to go back they can give all reasons to go back but they are, he is not ready he wants to go to canaan you understand so the direction of moses is different to the direction of the people likewise many christians okay their direction is different they want worldly prosperity they want meat to eat they are not interested in manna from heaven do you understand they don't they are not interested in the coming good land of canaan they are not interested in the eternal life that jesus gives they want immediate benefits can i become rich can i become prosperous today i want chicken biryani today i want mutton biryani on the way i'm not worried about tomorrow after my breath last breath what is going to happen do you understand but the actual life actually starts after the last breath that is eternal life this is a short life okay now the lord immediately responded to moses and also these people i think it's my understanding that they thought moses has miracle working power in his hand why can't he immediately perform a miracle and bring a pool of water do you understand we have seen such wonderful miracles from this old man why not a miracle now when we have no water if you were able to destroy the pharaoh's kingdom like this with 10 wonders why not perform a wonder to bring about a pool in the desert so they thought as a moses had the power to do those things immediately at the request and he was not doing it he was delaying it. do you understand that some misunderstanding i believe so the lord is saying pass before the people and take with you some of the elders of israel don't go alone because you need some witnesses that it is not you it is i am going it is i who is going to perform miracle and take in your hand your staff with which you struck the nile and go so take the shepherd staff you are the shepherd of israel you have to take authority of a shepherd you understand it's a blessing to be under a shepherd it's bless it's a blessing to be under a spiritual leader who fears god who speaks to god it is a blessing to be a, under a person to go along with a person who has the staff the authority that has been provided by god it, it is good that the staff is in operation it was already operated in the red sea do you understand it is already in operation it's already activated it has a life in it pharaoh the enemy has seen the staff in action the pharaoh learned that it is not the bow and arrow and the sword that is going to liberate but a staff of a shepherd a stuttering shepherd is enough my dear brothers and sisters not an eloquent preacher moses was he was a stutterer till his death time until he died he was a stutterer he was not eloquent but he was a true man of god do you understand what you should look for fashion no eloquence no great influences great connections great networking no look for a person who is genuine before god do you understand shepherd and his staff should be operating it should be activated it should perform something for you <laughs> in troubled moments do you understand if it is not operating it is of no use my dear brother these are spiritual insights you have to understand and accept okay people people we nowadays we are we are we are going towards something which is not spiritual that's why i'm going to teach you teach you all these things okay so now behold i will stand before you there on the rock at horeb so moses that's the direction now we have to take where to mount horeb where you meet me you cannot strike any rock and expect the water to come 
I will be on the Mount of Horeb only. It's my mountain. You have to reach there. Take your elders with you as witnesses. Because this Rephidim is a, even now, Rephidim, the desert of Rephidim, desert of sin and this location of Rephidim doesn't even have sand, it's all rock. So no chance of water. Do you understand? No pool. All dry, reddish stones. Reddish stones. No hope. Simply, no hope there. If you have to search for water, better leave this place. But what is God saying? Come to Mount Gore and you shall strike the rock and water will come out of it. Against all signs, against all common sense, things will start happening in your life if you believe in this God of Israel. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And during the days of COVID, you saw the smartest scientists in CNN, MSNBC, struggling to answer basic questions. Do you understand? These scientists have, have approved such millions of dollars for a lab in China where this, all, all of these calamities broke out. Do you understand? Do you understand? Who created it? So we should understand. Sometimes God violates the scientific laws that he embedded upon this planet Earth. He is the creator of science as well. Not just uh, churches and uh, spiritual people. He is the author of science. Science book, the author should be who? Jesus Christ, the word. The pronounced word, the voice of God which created science, heaven and earth. He is the author of science. But the same author has the power to override it. Do you understand? So that is what we call it as miracle. That is what we call it as wonder according to Bible. Okay? So, my dear brothers and sisters, so I want you to go ahead of the people and take some of the elders of Israel with you. Also be sure to bring your shepherd's staff. The one with which you struck the Nile. I will be there when you arrive standing at the rock of Horeb. Ensure that you are striking the right rock. When you go to church, when you gather together, ensure that the rock you are striking is the right rock. Bible. I am not uh, talking about, I don't have any personal agenda here. Okay? Wherever you go, wherever you strike, ensure you are striking the right rock. That right rock is Christ Jesus. Not a pastor, not an evangelist, not a prophet, not an apostle, not a teacher. Do you understand? The water should gush out of Christ. Every week my duty here is to ensure that I strike that rock and water gushes out and the springs of salvation ministry is nourished with the water flowing from the rock. Do you understand? Not my own genius. There is nothing for, for from my own intelligence that should come out. If it comes, it contaminates the pure water. What are we expecting in this dry desert journey of life? My dear brothers and sisters, who are these Israelites? When they, they accepted the plan of salvation, we accept the plan of salvation, the greater one than Moses, Jesus Christ, the plan of salvation we accepted. Okay, we accepted him as the Savior. In the days of Moses, Moses said, God has sent me, the I am, that I am has sent me. And he asked me to deliver you from the Egyptians. So come together, stay with me. With mighty wonders, I am going to deliver you. That is the plan of salvation for them. And they accepted it. And they gathered under the leadership of Moses. And with all these ten wonders, Moses brought them out of Egypt to Red Sea. And the Red Sea, the passage of through the Red Sea is now in the New Testament we interpret it as the baptism. Alright? So, in that you should have seen, if you are coming from a non-Christian family like me, you should have struggled at the moment when you want to take baptism. Ask Gopi brother. Ask the, those people who came from non-Christian background. Huh? It is so difficult to convince our parents to say yes for a baptism. That's just because the Pharaoh is struggling from behind. 
but there is a Red Sea blocking me. There is struggle from all sides and there is murmuring in my family. People, elders stood up and murmured against Moses. Have you brought us to the Red Sea to kill us and our children? It's better we were slaves in Goshen. Do you understand? It's a life or death matter. That is why when you pass through the waters, you come out as a new creature in Christ. And the very same water that creates a new creature in you, new person in you, is this very same water which kills the Pharaoh who was, who was behind you all these years. The covenant with Satan that Adam and Eve made is broken there. Don't neglect the covenant, don't ignore, don't, don't try to go away, shy away from the deep covenant that Adam made with Satan, Adam and Eve. Instead of resembling Christ, from that day onward Adam and Eve resembled Satan. All qualities of Satan started coming in the human beings. Bitterness, anger, fraud, telling lies, murdering, hmm? division. Warfare, everything where does it come? Does it come, does it come from the Lord? No. So you started to now you are pulled into a new life in Christ through baptism, and then you emerge as a new creature. Then now your face is shining, even without fair and lovely, even without the powder, ponds, dream flower powder, your face is bright. Why? Because the inner man has been cleansed and purified. And now the spirit, you become a mirror of Christ. The angle is changed. Now you start resembling the holiness of Christ. Do you understand? So the Christians who live in Christ, who are in deep prayer and filled with the Holy Spirit, you can see a change in their eyes, in their face, there's a glow without all makeup. Do you understand? Why? It's because they started, they become new creature. My dear brothers and sisters, after the Red Sea, oh, there was great excitement. Miriam, right? Miriam, the elder sister of Moses. It's a family ministry. If you see, it's Miriam and Aaron are all brother and sister of Moses. But they brought such a great revival in the land of Israel. So Miriam started singing songs, worshipping. And Aaron became the priest of the land, okay, of the Israel. And you know, all great excitement, every new song they are singing, new videos they are releasing. Okay? Okay, YouTube, 1 million views, 1.2, 4, sorry, 4 million views. There were 40 lakh minimum views. Okay? On the first day of release. They were already ahead of all these YouTuber celebrities. One, one song, Miriam, if, you, if she sings, 40 lakh views immediately. All likes. Subscribed. Do you understand? Subscribe to Miriam's version. Okay? All excitement. And then one, two, three, four days. Then, oh, they were, they were passing through the desert. So they saw a pool of water. They went, oh, that's a beautiful, bluish, green, crystal clear water. And they went and drank of it. Oh my goodness, it was so bitter. So bitter. My dear brothers and sisters. Your initial excitement suddenly is broken by life's trouble. Do you understand? This is a life journey, Christian life journey I'm talking about. Do you understand? You expect, oh, from now on, I'm going to, I'm not going to walk on, uh, uh, on the floor. I'm going to be floating. No, you won't be floating. I'm talking about real Christianity, the challenge of, challenges of real Christianity, my dear brothers and sisters. You get in touch with a beautiful, attractive pool of water, but it is giving such a bitter taste. Attractive but bitter. Complaints. Do you understand? The old man is now coming back. Old Adam is emerging. Suddenly the new creature came down on the old man. Do you understand? This is the life of a Christian. That's a struggle. Suddenly, how did you come out, man, Adam? I was still there. Just hiding. Do you understand? This is a this is a problem with Christian life. They complained, complained, and they stood against the shepherd Moses. So Moses had to treat the water. 
with the wood which is the cross of calvary we denote it with the cross of calvary every time you see in christian not only to get your first level of entry into christianity that you come to the cross of calvary but every touch point with bitterness in life every disappointment in your life where should you go you should go to the cross of calvary because it is settled there it is settled the file is getting settled there your rescue plan is there the answer to mara's bitterness is there in the cross of calvary your defeated mindset can be broken there in the cross of calvary my dear brothers and sisters there is a pure spring of blood of jesus christ coming out of, of the cross hallelujah a spring you know the roman the roman soldier i don't know where the need came because it was suddenly becoming dark with the nature standing against those people who were surrounded around the cross of calvary he wanted to ensure that this carpenter jesus christ who is ridiculed as the king of the jews is really dead on the cross because usually a young man will not die so soon on the cross of it is a slow death it's a painful slow death so how he was worried whether this guy will come out of the cross because that will become a big big blunder so he pierced a spear upon the sides of jesus the bible says water and blood came out who's doubt we the springs of salvation should be connected to that spring am i right my dear brothers and sisters we are real stuff we are not doing any gimmicks ministry here the our origin is there at the cross of calvary where he gave us blood and water for you and for me the last drop of blood was brought out by the spear and we identify ourselves to the cross of calvary there will be questions moses was questioned Moses leadership was questioned Moses intentions were questioned why he brought them out of Egypt that question was an intention based question right oh you wanted to become a pharaoh for us is that why you brought us out of uh, Egypt so you had a different plan to enslave us that's why you brought to, us to wilderness so you want to become a king of the king of the israelites so do you understand such type of questions that broke the heart of Moses 